Hi everybody, my name is Dow Ryan and I'm here at Aprovecho on the eastern side of the Coast Range in Oregon. I'm the co-owner of Resilience Permaculture Design, a full service design and implementation company located here in Oregon as well. I'm also the author of Beyond the War on Invasive Species, a permaculture approach to ecosystem restoration, and I'm excited to be working with you all on this course. So let's talk a little bit about the differences between alternative and appropriate technology. I'm standing here in front of Aprovecho's straw bale dorm, which has a series of photoelectric, photovoltaic solar electric panels. And these are often thought of as a good alternative technology. However, it definitely stands to be discussed about whether they are actually appropriate technology. Several years ago now, uh, our, so our inverter broke, which is the connection between the solar panels and the actual electrical inputs that come into the house. And so even though the solar panels were actively generating electricity from the sun, we weren't actually able to put that electricity into the wiring of the house because of this, this one single part that broke. And it's actually a very expensive part and it's something that most people don't really know how to fix themselves. So it was a good example for us in our studies of appropriate technology because it wasn't really a human scale technology that we here at Aprovecho had the knowledge or expertise to deal with ourselves. So while solar panels represent a really good uh, potential alternative technology, they still are a really technical solution to meeting our energy needs. So because Aprovecho has been involved in the discussions around what is an appropriate technology for so many years, one of our focuses has been developing human scale technologies that we can make and fix ourselves. So here in this outdoor kitchen, there's a couple of examples. This is a barrel oven here that we've made on site. And although we didn't manufacture the barrel itself, we did weld it to become an oven. So this is just an old metal 55 gallon barrel. And it's surrounded by cob or clay that we harvested from our site here on our ponds that we'll be looking at a little bit later. And it's heated by a rocket stove type chimney system. So we light a fire in this hole and the heat from the fire travels up around the barrel, heats it up just like a normal oven would in, in a gas powered or an electric oven. And the smoke travels around the barrel and then up out of the chimney. This is an example of an, a relatively appropriate technology that we were able to construct with just a little bit of added energy in the form of uh, welding to make a, a cooking technology. We also have a couple other examples here. This is a rocket stove griddle. So in this example, the fire is also made down here in this little opening and the heat travels right up to the griddle surface. And one of the principles of appropriate technology in the application of cooking is that you want the heat from the wood or the other biomass that you're burning to travel as quickly as possible to the cooking surface. So here the, the heat is traveling right up to the top of the griddle. It's hottest right at this point. And then over on this side of the griddle, it's cooler and you can actually set pots of rice or beans or other things right on the cook surface there. While this does use metal, which has a kind of higher embedded energy cost associated with it, it is a relatively low tech uh, cooking technology solution that can be used in many parts of the world. We're here in the kitchen of Aprovecho's Straw Bale Dormitory and there's another really cool example of appropriate technology right behind me. This is a draft box. So it's basically a box that's been built into the wall of the north side of the structure and it's openable from the counter right here. And as you can see, it's insulated from the heat of the inside of the building on the door. And on the outside, it's open to the north side of the building. So the cool air that's always passing on that north side of the building is open to all of the contents of the draft box. So it serves as kind of a refrigerator-like uh, apparatus within the kitchen, except it doesn't require any energy at all. Um, and for about six months of the year, we could live without a fridge in this temperate climate because it cools off enough throughout the day, especially on the north side of the building, to keep most foods fresh for as long as we'd really want to keep them around anyway. Here we are at the solar wood drying kiln, and this is basically a greenhouse that is oriented to the south so that the sun falls directly on this um, transparent corrugated plastic. 
And by doing that, it heats up the structure behind it. And what we use this for is to dry lumber that we make out of our sustainably managed forest on site here. Um, in order to make lumber buildable, to be used as flooring or to be used as framing material, it needs to be really dry. And usually most lumber is dried in natural gas fired um, drying facilities or kilns. Uh, that are located at mills throughout the Willamette Valley here where we are in Oregon. Uh, it's a very energy intensive process. So one of the things that we were hoping to do here at Aprovecho is to show how we could uh, make high value wood products without using that really energy intensive process. So we put our uh, lumber that we have milled, harvested and milled in here. We can also dry our firewood to get it down to a really um, dry state to where it can burn really efficiently. And basically this is just a super insulated building with rigid foam painted black on the back so that it gets as hot as possible and also retains as much heat as possible through the night so we can dry our wood really effectively using just the energy of the sun. The application of this technology can be really simple. This is an example of a solar food dehydrator that was made by one of our students. Um, and basically what we have here is a corrugated metal panel painted black on the front covered with plexiglass so that it draws in heat and retains it. And it has a little bit of hardware cloth at the bottom so that rodents can't get in to get the food that's inside. The hot air rises naturally up into this chamber here and then it drops back down over the screens that are within that you can put your food onto. Here we have calendula and hawthorn berries drying. So basically the hot air is forced down across this food and dries it out and then it leaves through this back chamber uh, and is drawn out the back of the dehydrator. It's a really simple, unique uh, model that basically works off of the physics of heat and dries your food. So we put in apple slices, pears, uh, flowers, medicinal herbs, all kinds of things can be dried in this uh, neat little dehydrator. So that's a brief overview of some of the appropriate technologies that we have here on site at Aprovecho and I hope it inspires you to make some of your own at home.